Well, the new CEO of ERCOT starts his first full week on the job today. It is a tough job, too. If you're not familiar, ERCOT is the state's electric grid operator. Pablo Vegas is now the president and CEO of the grid uh, operator there. This will be his second time working in the ERCOT service territory. Back in 2008, he was president and chief operating officer of AEP Texas, which provides power to parts of the Texas coast as well as the valley and west Texas. ERCOT's former CEO, Bill Magnus, you will remember, was fired in March of 2021 after the power grid uh, almost completely collapsed during the winter storm and a lot of folks lost power. They've had an interim leader since. His name is Brad Jones. We recently did a Yolitics podcast episode with him. But again, the uh, new one takes over today. Well, we're watching a couple of big court cases for you here this afternoon. First, Billy Shamir Mir back on trial for capital murder in Dallas. He is accused of killing more than 20 older women here in North Texas. Shamir Mir was convicted of one woman's murder back in April and sentenced to life in prison without parole. But the DA wants to get at least one additional conviction. This trial is for the death of Mary Brooks. Prosecutors say in January of 2018, Shamir Mir followed her home from the grocery store and took her life. Also happening this afternoon, prosecutors started making their case against the founder of the far right group called the Oath Keepers. Stuart Rhodes, who is from Granbury here in North Texas, as well as four others tied to that group are all charged with a very serious charge here, seditious conspiracy. Each one is on trial for their alleged roles in the deadly insurrection there at the Capitol back in January of 2021. A digital investigative reporter from our sister station in D.C., Jordan Fisher, has been in the courtroom and joins us live now to talk more about this. Jordan, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be with us today. I know it's been a, a busy day today. If you could kind of fill us in and tell us a little bit about the atmosphere there in the courtroom as this trial got underway today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of these trials have been pretty high interest, but this one uh, certainly uh, the peak of that. The, the courtroom is full. The overflow room is full. The media room is full. And I think everybody is waiting to see whether prosecutors can uh, sort of bring the goods, so to speak, on this rarely seen seditious conspiracy charge that these five members of the Oath Keepers are facing, uh, particularly with Stuart Rhodes, the, the only the president who has been in the courtroom uh, for jury selection last week and, of course, today as, as testimony kicked off. Yeah, you talk about how this is a rarely seen charge. We've seen so many of these cases move through now uh, from January 6th, and they've many of them have been for lesser charges. Let's talk a little bit about seditious conspiracy here and what kind of punishment uh, Rhodes and the others may be looking at here if they are found guilty of that charge. Yeah, seditious conspiracy is a major felony. It faces a 20-year maximum sentence if convicted on that. Now, that's similar. In fact, it's exactly the same as the maximum sentence for obstruction of an official proceeding, which is the biggest charge we've seen in, in previous cases. But obviously, the uh, rhetorical weight of that is much bigger. And I think judges are going to look at that come sentencing, were they to be convicted of it um, much more seriously than um, you know, even obstruction of an official proceeding, which is in and of itself, as I it said, a serious 20-year charge. Jordan, uh, do you know at this point, uh, you know, are, are we looking at a, a timeline here that's going to be a long trial? What do we expect with this one since we've got five uh, people here who are facing trial at the same time? And as you said, this is, you know, a, sort of an unusual charge that we don't see very often. This is easily the most complex case the DOJ has brought to trial yet. And befitting that, we're looking at five to six weeks, possibly even seven weeks. Jury selection itself took three full days. Uh, it took almost the full day today to do opening arguments, so certainly not a short trial by any means. Uh, my plan is to be there every single day for the next six weeks, and I think that's what the jury and the attorneys and the defendants are sort of batting down for. It is going to be uh, fascinating to watch this thing unfold. And uh, Jordan Fisher, you had a front row seat uh, to history there in D.C. today. Uh, digital investigative reporter from our st sister station there in D.C. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much for uh, bringing us up to speed on this one. We'll keep watching. Absolutely, thank you.